With cheaper hosts that cut corners, everything usually feels fine at first, but once you start adding plugins, making edits and running updates, that's when things slow down. Saving pages takes longer, the dashboard feels heavier, and you start noticing little pauses that you didn't have before. I've had sites where everything technically worked, but simple things like saving a page or opening settings already felt slow. So adding one more plugin didn't feel worth the risk, and that's when hosting starts getting in your way. So I wanna talk through what actually changes once you're past setup, where cheaper hosting starts getting in the way, and which cheap hosts actually hold up when you're using them day to day. Now, one quick thing before we move on though, this video is sponsored by Hostinger. It's a host I've been using for years, and later on you're gonna see how much the hosting itself affects what you can realistically do with your site. All right, so with GoDaddy, getting a site online is honestly pretty easy. You click a button, WordPress installs, the site is online, and you land straight in the WordPress dashboard. That dashboard is just the main workspace where you write pages, edit content, and manage everything on the site. And at that stage, you do the usual setup. You pick a theme so the site doesn't feel empty, install a page builder like Elementor so you can design pages visually instead of dealing with code, add an SEO plugin so search engines know what the site is about, maybe turn on some basic security, this is all standard stuff and GoDaddy doesn't fight you on any of it. And early on, it behaves exactly how you'd hope. Pages open, changes save, plugins install. If your goal is to get a site online, set up a few pages and move on, GoDaddy does that job just fine. Now where the experience starts to change is once that site stops being set it and forget it and turns into something you actually work on. On GoDaddy's cheaper plans, your site shares server resources with a lot of other sites, and that's basically the processing power WordPress uses to load the editor, save changes, and run plugins. Sharing resources is how they keep the cost down, and if you're only logging in once in a while, it's really not a big deal. But once you're inside WordPress more often, those limits become noticeable. When there's enough room, you rarely notice your host. It's like a landlord you only check in with when you pay rent. You click preview to check a page, it opens up instantly, you close it, and you're right back editing without losing your place. When things start getting tighter, you feel it in small ways. You open the picture library to change an image, and it doesn't pop up right away. Thumbnails load one by one. You choose the picture, you click insert, and there's a little delay before it shows up on the page. Nothing breaks, that's important. The site loads fine. Visitors don't see the problems, and uptime isn't the issue. All of this friction it's on your side, inside of the dashboard, while you're trying to work. And if you're only hopping in occasionally, this barely matters. And that's where GoDaddy actually makes sense. GoDaddy is a decent choice if you want a straightforward WordPress site. You don't plan on constantly tweaking things, and you mostly just want it online and working. It's familiar, widely supported, and easy to get started with. Where it starts to feel less ideal is if you are regularly editing, experimenting, or refining the site over time. Those small pauses add up. You open pages, you wait a beat, jump back to the dashboard, wait again, make an edit, save, wait one more time. Each delay is tiny, but together, they break your rhythm. On top of that, GoDaddy splits things up more than you might expect. Some features live inside WordPress, others live in your GoDaddy account. Backups, security tools, performance settings, they're not always in one place, and some are treated as upgrades instead of default. So you occasionally stop building just to kind of figure out where something is managed. Now, I remember tweaking a homepage here, section once, just changing a headline and swapping an image. On a smoother setup, that's a very quick in and out. Here, it was click edit, wait for the builder, make the change, hit save, then wait again before moving on. It's not a deal breaker, just enough friction that I stopped doing quick tweaks unless I had a few changes lined up. So GoDaddy isn't bad hosting, it's just hosting that works best when you're not living inside WordPress all the time. Now, if you want something easy, familiar, and good enough for a simple site that you're not gonna to use too much, GoDaddy does that job. If you know you'll be inside the dashboard often, adjusting things week after week, that's when you start wanting something that stays out of your way more consistently. So after spending things on hosting where things technically work, but keep nudging back at you, you start rethinking about what you even care about. You stop asking, does this run WordPress? And start asking, how does this feel when I'm in here all the time? Now on the service, nothing on Hostinger looks special. You install WordPress, you log in, and you're staring at the same dashboard you've seen everywhere else. The difference shows up once you actually start moving around. Editing a page, jumping back to the dashboard, opening settings, previewing changes, 
There's never a moment where WordPress feels like it's lagging behind what you just did. A big reason for that is how Hostinger runs WordPress under the hood. So they use Lightspeed instead of the older servers most cheap hosts rely on. So in practical terms, that just means WordPress responds faster when you save, preview, or load the editor. On top of that, Lightspeed cache is already doing its thing in the background. Cacheing just means WordPress isn't rebuilding the same pages from scratch every single time. You don't configure it. You don't babysit it. You just notice that things stay smooth while you're working. For example, Say you're editing a page in Elementor. You move a section, you tweak the spacing, you swap an image, you hit update. On weaker hosting, there's often that half second pause where everything freezes before it saves. On Hostinger, it updates and you're already moving on to the next thing. Same with image uploads. You drop in a handful of photos, WordPress generates different sizes in the background and you keep working. On some hosts, everything slows down while that's happening. Here it doesn't, it just stays out of the way. And that's what I mean by headroom. It just means your site isn't constantly brushing up against limits the moment you add a page builder, a few plugins, and start editing regularly. Control panel helps too. Hostinger's H panel is meant to be functional. Backups are where you expect them to be. Cache controls are one click. Performance settings aren't scattered across five different places. When you need to check something quickly, you're not hunting for it. Hostinger also doesn't shove upgrades in your face every time you log in. Backups feel like part of the hosting, not something you're missing unless you pay more. You're not constantly second guessing whether you're missing something. Over time, that changes how you work. You don't second guess before making changes. You don't batch edits. You don't leave things for later because you don't feel like dealing with slowdown. You just fix things as you see them. And that's why I usually say Hostinger is for people who actually plan to use their site. Blogs you update often, small business sites you tweak as things change, personal projects where you're learning WordPress and clicking around a lot. If you are launching a site and barely touching it afterwards, almost any host will work. But if you're inside WordPress week after week, hosting or stays consistent in a way cheap hosting usually doesn't. It doesn't feel fast one day and slow the next. It just feels the same every time you log in. And once you get used to that, it's really hard to go back. And like I mentioned earlier, this is what I'm using myself. And if you wanna try it, there's a link below with my site starters code. It knocks an extra 10% off whatever deal they're already running, and it helps support the channel too. So after using Hostinger for a bit, you kind of reset your expectations. You get used to things just responding. You stop thinking about hosting altogether. But not everyone needs that level of smoothness or wants to pay for it right away. Sometimes you just want something cheaper, simpler, and predictable while you're still figuring things out. And that's where Namecheap comes in. Namecheap doesn't try to be the fastest or the most polished. What it does really well is consistency. Once you're a few days in, you start noticing that the experience doesn't really change. If something feels a little slower than Hostinger, it feels that way all the time. It's not random. Here's an example. So say you're in the WordPress media library uploading a batch of images. On Namecheap, they upload the thumbnails and everything finishes without you having to babysit it. It's not lightning fast, but it is steady. You're not refreshing the page wondering if something froze. Another place you feel it is when you're editing a page and duplicating sections. You click duplicate, the section appears immediately, you keep going. It doesn't feel fast or slow, it just feels consistent which is honestly what you want when you're still learning. And that's what Namecheap is trying to go for. At its core, this is still shared hosting, meaning your site shares server resources with other sites. In simple terms, there's a limit to how much you can push it. Heavy page builders, lots of animations, e-commerce features, constant background tasks, those will eventually slow things down. But for simpler sites, blogs, portfolios, or landing pages, Namecheap holds up pretty well. Another thing that I appreciate is how subtle it is. The dashboard doesn't constantly shove upgrades in your face. You're not clicking past promos every time you log in. You log in, you do what you need to do, and you log out. So Namecheap is solid if you want something affordable that behaves the same way every time and doesn't get in your way while you're learning. It's not trying to impress you. It's just trying to be reliable. It's not the best choice if you're constantly tweaking layouts, making tiny edits all day, or planning to grow the site quickly. That's where hosting or still feels better. But if you're early on and you just want a calm, stable place to learn, WordPress without any surprises, Namecheap makes a lot of sense. Now, I've used all three, and honestly, on paper, GoDaddy and Namecheap are basically the same thing. Cheap shared hosting, domains, one-click WordPress, all that stuff. Namecheap's stellar plan is around two bucks a month at the start and about five when it renews. GoDaddy usually starts closer to six and then jumps to around 12 later on, which already puts 
puts it in a weird spot. The real difference shows up once the site is live and you're actually inside WordPress. With GoDaddy, I always felt like I had to babysit it a bit. Backups, security, performance tools, they're kind of scattered around or tied to different plans. So you're always half wondering what's included and what's about to be an upsell. Namecheap was just way more chill. One dashboard, fewer surprises. Performance wise, they're in the same budget tier, but Namecheap just felt more consistent day to day. GoDaddy started feeling heavier once I added plugins and spent more time editing pages. Hostinger was the first time that stuff just stopped being a thing. I moved a site to their business plan, which is roughly about three bucks a month, and pages saved quicker, the dashboard felt lighter, and I never had to think about backups because they run daily. You click something, it responds, and you move on. Over time, that kind of smoothness matters way more than any single feature. So yeah, from actually using them, name cheap is fine. If you just want cheap and simple, GoDaddy gets annoying and expensive over time, and Hostinger just stays out of your way. It's not really about which one is best. It's about how much time you're actually going to spend working on the site and how much friction you're willing to put up with. And if this helps, you can like or subscribe if you want to try Hostinger. Don't forget there's a link below with the code site starters for an extra 10% off. And as always, I enjoy hearing your thoughts and I'll try to answer any questions or comments you leave down below as fast as I can. And finally, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.